Hi, my name is Heather Hanselman and I'm the owner of Pheasant Hazel and I'm based out of Columbus, Ohio. I have designed this really beautiful tablescape and I would love to show you um, how we made it and all of the gorgeous blooms, especially the garden roses that were provided by Alexandra Farms. So my design today was inspired by my the favorite childhood book called The Runaway Fairy by Molly Brett. It's about fairies that tend to specific plants and flowers in their garden. And the main character is Rosaline, who is the garden rose fairy. She ends up having all of her roses cut and she doesn't realize why. She's so distraught that she decides to take a vacation to visit her wild flower fairy cousins. She goes on a bunch of adventures with them. They have like this grand party that's happening when she comes back from her her trip, she realizes that her roses were taken to the county fair and she wins first prize. I thought that was like very fitting for what we were trying to do, especially featuring all of the garden roses. And in my mind, this is what Rosalind's dinner party would look like to celebrate her win. To make this mechanic that's behind me, we have some very basic uh, tools. So we use chicken wire. Um, this is a pre-cut strand that's very, very thin. It actually comes much wider than this. What I did was I cut it into this smaller section and then I'm actually gonna make like a little tube. And I think the one behind me is about an inch in diameter, um, but you can make it any size that you want. I wanted to keep all of this really thin. The thinner this is, the less you have to wrap around with like greenery or whatever you're using to cover it with. I think this one's 12 feet long. Um, so you would just measure out your length of what you would need and cut it to size and then create the tube. And then you literally just kind of bind it, twist bind it together. I'm gonna use bind wire and then I'm gonna use these branches. They're actually from Ikea. Um, if you buy, like, get like a natural branch, it still has water in it. So when you bind wire it and as it starts to dry out, the branch shrinks. These are already pre-dried, so you don't have to worry about any of that happening. I took these branches and then I cut them up into like three segments or four segments, just different lengths. And then I would actually stick them through to create like a network. And I would actually leave pieces of the branches actually sticking out pretty far. That created additional support for me to be able to wrap the tube in the Smilax. And then it made it so that it actually really gripped on to it um, really well. Um, so I didn't have to do too much like zip tying. I could basically just weave everything um, around the tube and then the branches helped catch all of the, the Smilax um, for everything to get weaved around. Take the bind wire and I would do like three finger lengths and I would just wrap it around like this and I would cut it in two spots with some wire cutters. So there and then cutting. And then this gives you all of your little ties to be able to use to attach the branch through this and then you would bind wire it through here. And then we did that all the way throughout the entire tube, um, all the way down. So we made this one kind of twisting to kind of spiral around and down. And you could see a little bit of the branches sticking out here and there, um, but again, like aesthetically, it looks really beautiful with what we did, but it was really to cause uh, more of a structural support for the Smilax. It also helped with coverage because I didn't have to use as much to cover the entire um, tube. We did water tubes for the garden roses um, because they are a little bit more delicate. They need extra support. Water tubed all of them in order to stick them into the chicken wire to be able to hold them securely. So to attach this, there's a couple of different options you could use. In this case, we are in my garage at my house, which we just put hooks in the, the drywall and the ceiling, and then we used fishing line. But you could also use like heavy duty, duty suction cup. If you were doing something like this at a tented wedding, you could have an, the person who does all the rigging for like chandeliers and lighting work with you on the best way to rig it in the tent. The cool thing about this tube overall is you wouldn't have to hang this if you didn't want to. You could totally do this along the center of the table, just like we have it here. As a runner, you can create your own shapes with it. And the other thing about this chicken wire tube that's really awesome is that it's reusable. So after today, just keep the structure I created and I can use it over and over again. So these are flower frogs, which 
Most of us florists are pretty familiar. This is typically what we would see. This goes down in an actual vase. You hold it with putty. I actually used these, which the flower frog is down inside and then it's in a little cup, so you can put a little bit of water in here, kind of nestled in the moss on the table to create all of the living arrangements where the roses look like they're coming out from in between the plates, um, like a natural garden. So we just covered the table with moss and then I nestled these like down in the moss and brought the moss right up next to them. And then as we designed, it kind of filled in so you can't see these anymore. It creates this really pretty visual um, which focuses on the flowers and the roses specifically. So all in all, we use 10 of these little uh, flower cup frogs and place living arrangements throughout. Obviously we have the spiraling chicken wire base to create the center section that comes down the middle and then just the plates and silverware and you're good to go for a fun little dinner party.